stay stay motivated. Is it what? What do you think about the transition from online to live? Is it something that you're having to, you know, you're going to have to amend your game in any particular way, or? Yeah, it's it's difficult to go from like uh, the online atmosphere where um, it's more you get to see everyone's stack sizes, like you have the whole bird's eye view and. You, you know your stack size, you know everyone else's stack size. And like playing stack sizes is extremely important. Um, it's probably one of the most important things in poker. And I find that live, I don't really know my ch my chip stack at every second. Like every hand, I, I'm, I'm always like looking at my chip stack and like trying to count it. But I find that if I do that more automatic and know everyone else's chip stack more automatic, um, that would improve my live game as well. Yeah. And online, you, you kind of get reads from different things than you do live. Like online, you get reads more like from how a person, like this may seem silly, but like how, how fast the person clicks, how fast the person, or how much they bet. Um, just, I don't know, you, you kind of like get the sense, sometimes when you're playing online, you kind of get the sense of like how the person is clicking the mouse, whether they're clicking it like really angrily or like really, uh, really like, okay, I'm going to think about this, I'm, I'm going to... It's amazing to hear you say it, because, you know, to the, the layman, they'd be thinking, well, you're talking rubbish, because it's just, there's somewhere else in the world, thousands of miles away, how can you possibly feel that? But I'm getting the real sense that you are, like, you know, I've got a real feel for the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's it's one of my strong points is reading players online, and um, there's, this, there's a lot of tendencies uh, that players have, and people don't really realize how obvious they are like the unknown players that, that come in and play. Um, they make really obvious bets and obvious bluffs at the wrong times, and <clears throat> I'm just really good at picking that off. So, and But live, I mean, there's so much more. There's like so many more variables, and I don't feel like I'm at the level that I want to be yet, mm. but I feel that, uh, like I said, with more experience and with more, um, you know, the more live tournaments I play, the more comfortable I'm going to become at like, just seeing all these variables because live poker is so much different. It's like comparing checkers with chess, really. Sure. I, I mean, I guess the key factor is that you know that you've got to grow as a live person, or you're willing to put in the time to do it. Whereas a lot of people, especially after being sponsored, they're like, you know, I've sort of reached the top of my game. I don't need to improve. Exactly. I mean, I'm always, I'm always looking to improve. The game is constantly evolving, so you always have to evolve as a player as well. Because um, the game right now isn't like it used to be a year ago. And the game in two years isn't going to be how it is now. So it's important to constantly like change your game and yeah. constantly experiment with like new strategies because a lot of people like they're set on their strategy and then they just don't they don't change it and they don't it, it doesn't cause like a catalyst to improve. They're just happy uh, being the best. But you know it's like Tiger Woods. He he was like the top of his game like number one and he still was changing his golf swing like constantly. It's exactly like that. You, you always have to be like experimenting with new strategies and experimenting with new uh, little tricks. How, how does that actually work? You know, say you sit down at a session and you, as you were talking about just now, you choose to experiment. What's the process that you go through? I mean, you know, what's the, the constant and what do you choose as a variable for your experiment? I, I don't really understand how that works. Okay, well, um, for instance, like mini raising and mini re raising and doing all these things that a lot of people would think are really silly and aren't positive EV, as the two plus tours would say. Um, it it really <laughs> like a lot. Of, <laughs> nice giggle in the background. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these guys don't understand like that. Tournament poker um, is so there's so many different options you have, and it's so um, there's there's not like a, there's not a correct decision all the time and there's not a wrong decision all the time there's there's so many different options you can take to to make uh, your play profitable um, and you know a lot of people on two plus two don't understand this because they're more cash game players and it's more like um, I don't want to say mechanical but it, it's more it's more standard in my opinion and maybe that's why I'm not good at cash games or not that good because I think it's standard but I think in tournaments you have so much more um, I don't know there's a lot there's so many more ways where you, you like there's so many different ways to be successful yeah. like uh, there's a few players that are constantly ridiculed that are just absolute winning players like Viet Cong for example um, he he's been ridiculed on all the posts on pocket fives but uh, he 
he does something and it works. And it's something that it looks silly to, to most people, but um, it's effective. And a lot of pr pretty much like any form of aggression in tournament poker is going to be successful as long as you're controlled to some extent. So I don't know, experimenting, um, experimenting with different things that people would normally say are not uh, like very conventional. Like I like to do, I like to think outside the box. I like to to come up with new strategies that are unconventional and people don't really think and much And how long of. does it take you to work out whether a new strategy is actually effective financially for you?